now I want to introduce uh, Jess Valdez uh, to make his presentation. As you know, uh, Philippines uh, have suffered a lot of uh, you know, situations uh, during this uh, typhoon. So he's here to kind of present his work and uh, anyway, uh, without <laughs> Delay, I, I want to introduce Kes Valdes. Yeah, please welcome him. Okay, thank you. Okay. But before I begin my talk, uh, I would like to invite you all to offer a moment of silence for the survivors of the Super Typhoon, Yola Super Typhoon Yolanda in Central Philippines and also for our global peace icon and Nobel Peace Laureate Nelson Mandela, who just passed away yesterday. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's an honor for me to stand before you today to share my story and the principles I learned from my past. First of all, I would like to share with you a quote from a simple street educator who pushes carts in the street to educate and he was also awarded CNN Hero of the Year 2009. Mr. F. N. Peña Florida has said, and I quote, our planet is filled with heroes, young and old, rich and poor, men, women, of different colors, shapes, and sizes. We are one great tapestry. That is a great way to illustrate unity in diversity, isn't it? Am I correct? Yeah, thank you. People of different cultures and religious beliefs tempered and interconnected by a common goal to achieve sustainable peace. Peace that builds bridges instead of walls. Peace that is being lived than just being said. Peace that begins with within. That peace that was once elusive in my childhood. Please watch this video. Sabi ko po ako ay uh, naninirahan sa kadiliman dahil po ito po yung pagkasunog na po ngayon po. Tapos po yung hindi nga masakit po pati yung mga panggugugod po. Yung, yung, yung ano po, yung sinasabi na po na ano po yung malas na po lang sa pamilya po namin. Kaya ngayon isip po parang Alis po na po, malis po din sa akin po, ah. Kasi lagi nila po siya sa akin po yun po. Kes is only four years old when he has no other choice than to run away from his abusive home. He's all alone. Like many other street children, he tries to survive at the dump site. The conditions are horrible. Day and night he is exposed to danger. He's all alone with no place to call home. At night, he sleeps in one of the open tombs of the local graveyard hoping for a sense of protection. Not a warm, soft bed, but a cold and terrifying place to sleep. But then, his life changes completely. Kes falls in a pile of burning tires at the dump site and is severely wounded. Reaching out for help, there is only one man who cares, Mr. Hanu. That day, it probably was uh, the first day in his life that he felt loved accepted and cared for. Mr. Hanin treats Kez's wounds till they are healed. 
He takes care of Kez and becomes his guardian. At the age of seven, celebrating his birthday for the very first time, he does something special. Instead of asking for gifts himself, Kez decides to give gifts to the children still living on the street, and thus started his gifts of hope. That birthday of his was the start of something great. From that day, he started giving uh, to a few kids, and then the next year they added more and more, and the project grew bigger and bigger. He involved uh, some of his friends. It has grown into to something big, and it, it seems that he doesn't want to stop. Today, Kez has grown to become a beacon of inspiration for many. Dozens of volunteers have joined his organization, championing community children. Flip-flops, toys, toothbrushes, together they have already handed out thousands of gifts of hope. Yet Kez does a lot more for street children. He educates them about personal hygiene, explains them their rights, and takes care of their wounds. But above all, he gives them hope. Everywhere, Kez is being surrounded by children. He gives them love, care, fun and attention. He has already helped over 10,000 street children. He has treated over 3,000 wounds. Whenever he sees someone in need, he lends a help. Kes is undoubtedly a hero because he sees a need and immediately thinks of a way that he can do something to meet that need. That simple. My motto is, uh, we can change the world one heart at a time. Ang ibig sabihin po nun ay, kung meron po tayong pusong tumulong, ang puso po tayong mag-arula, uh, pwede po natin mabagi yung mundo po natin. So, doon po sa isang tao. To thousands of children, Kez is a great inspiration. He is an inexhaustible source of hope. He is their hero. That is why he is the rightful winner of the International Children's Peace Prize 2012. These young people show the incredible resilience in the human spirit. And I congratulate this year's winner. Thank you. I grew up in a dump site where nothing's clean. My family picks garbage to sell, garbage to use, and garbage to eat. I used to drink the water from a pothole in the street and even from sewage canals when I was little because I did not know it was harmful to me. Allowing flies to feast on my open wounds and paws was normal to me and my friends. Sleeping inside vacated tombs just to escape beatings from my own parents was the most peaceful I felt then. Today, many children still suffer in the streets, being trafficked, sold, and enslaved. They are close to danger and death. This is why I need you to join me in helping children to better lives by teaching, demonstrating, and spreading love by way of reaching out. And I believe that some of these children you save today will pay the act forward to help champion their very own communities in the future. 
I believe that all of us here want to have a much, much better world, right? Am I correct? Yes. We are enjoined with one dream and conviction. That is to bring positive change into this world we live in. A friend Peña Florida's mentor, Mr. Hainin Manalaysay, who, whom I fondly call Tats, he introduced me to several volunteer activities from distributing biscuits and juices to demonstrating good hygiene practices. I felt good about what I did, especially when people appreciated those small efforts. These experiences made me understand the principles of the power of one. The principle, the first principle I've learned is one is never too young to give back to society. Age is not a hindrance for us to make a difference through our own little and simple ways. A small yet significant difference can impact the world we live in. We can prove to the world that no age, gender, and status, and even our bad experiences will limit our capacity to help. One of the principles that that's taught me is when we see a need, do something. My turning point in life is when I got burned severely. The day I suffered the burns on my, on my body was like my baptism of fire. It was so painful that night, at the dump site, the hospital, and also the days that followed. I cried out of pain. On the other hand, that, that was also the day I was rescued. And now, I have tears of joy because since then, up to this day, I know I am loved. Looking back, the fire that burned my skin and flesh is the same fire that started a flame in my soul. A flame that would warm cold hearts. A flame that would shed light to the path of the lost. A flame that would spark hope, lighting an entire sea of darkness and desperation. My dad's Mr. Harnin taught me these principles and keeps on reminding me daily by his own life's example. So, when you see a need, stand up. No age requirement to make the first step and take courage. Next, one is never too poor to think of ways to help others. A person may be poor, but he or she is not incapable. At times, we lack resources and, and we feel that we could not do anything it hinders our desire to help and blocks the opportunity to serve. No, every opportunity to help is like building a bridge of peace towards fellow men. Turning a blind eye on them is like building a wall of distance. Our team of C3 initiated in 2010 a project called Ahon Pilipinas or Rise Up Philippines. The project aims to immediately send relief to communities damaged by a disaster like floods, storms, earthquakes, and even war. It is our way of bridging people to live in peace as one great tapestry. But the greatest challenge, not only for us, but for our entire country, is rising up from this recent disaster. Please watch this.
November 8 was the day Yolanda hit, and we wasted no time to respond the next day and sent relief goods immediately to save people. Like us children, you too, you may have your own limitations, weaknesses, and difficulties, but please never use those as reasons or an escape to hold back yourselves when, we, when you see the chance to help and make a difference. Finally, one is never too ordinary to be a hero. I believe that we all want to have a better future and create a solution to the problems we face in this world. I've learned this principle from my personal hero, Kreef. His efforts for Yolanda victims and survivors made him think of ways to help. Again, please watch this. up and help others, it's always growing. It never stops. In the past several weeks alone, we've seen the devastation of tornadoes touching down here in the United States. We've seen in the Philippines a super typhoon which decimated towns and villages, killing thousands of people. I'll never forget the, the people I met in Tacloban searching for the bodies of their children all alone amidst the rubble and debris without help. Among those responding to the typhoon was Efren Peña Florida, we may remember was honored as the CNN Hero of the Year back in 2009 for his work educating kids in the slums of the Philippines. He put his pushcart classrooms to work these last several weeks, encouraging people to donate to the victims of the typhoon, and he helped raise 30 million pesos in a nationwide telethon. Other CNN heroes have also rushed in to help to aid the vulnerable and help people who have been devastated in the Philippines. 2009 hero Doc Henley who has sent thousands of clean water filters. He is here with us tonight. Doc, where are you? Stand up, if you would. Doc, stand up right here. Doc is awesome. And, and that's the extraordinary thing about our CNN heroes. Their work never ends. Their work never ceases. And with each passing year, they keep rolling up their sleeves, and they keep lending a hand. Take a look. So, Doc, can you uh, tell us about your uh, experience and what brought you here to the Philippines? I mean, like, Efren emailed you. Yeah, it was uh, obviously all over the news, uh, the disaster, and I couldn't believe it at home. And my wife was like, are you going to do anything? Are you going to do anything? And I'm like, 
I hope so. I hope so. And the very next uh, day, I get an email mm -hmm. from Efren saying, will you come help our people? And I'm like, yes, I'm coming. I'll be there. I'm not really sure what we're going to do just yet, but we're going to be there. And sure enough, we were able to get enough great support from people back home in the States to get thousands of water filters mm -hmm. that we're now bringing in the country, uh, bringing out and distributing all over the uh, region of Tacloban. Uh, later on tomorrow, we'll be north of uh, Cebu and then north of Iloilo from there. And uh, so it's just, I, we wouldn't be able to do our work that we're doing right now if it wasn't for Efren mm -hmm. contacting me and, and helping with all his amazing connections that he has here in the Philippines to get us plugged in where we need to be plugged in so that we can do the work that we love to do. Mm -hmm. How come you've been together for like um, since Sunday? So, and we've been going around um, late so uh, what's your assessment? You know, I've been to a lot of bad places around the world. Uh, I was in Syria over this last year, in the middle of the war there. I was in Haiti after the earthquake. And there, it, it's, it's, it's a very sad sight in some of these areas, the amount of destruction. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it's everything. It's not just the buildings and, and, and the structures. But the trees, everything that was once living is now just blown over. It, it, it was, it's really uh, heartbreaking. But what is encouraging, though, is the people, uh, even though the land is devastated, the people are not devastated. The people are strong, and they're courageous, and they're fighting back, and they're doing whatever they can, not just to survive here, but they're figuring out how to thrive in the midst of all this disaster. So I'm so impressed with the Filipino people and their heart push through this terrible time and make the best of it. Okay, a changed mind and a changed heart can help change this world. So now, I stand before you as a changed person. From a former street child to an advocate of, po of peace for street kids and as a herald of children's rights. Yes, I am just one, but I have a firm purpose to help make things better for generations to come. One is never too ordinary to do something to help and meet a need. The simple ways of sharing a meal, a toy, a pair of slippers, or a smile will bring joy. And that joy will be transformed to hope. Now that the Philippines is filled with grief in this time of great desperation, one can shine in the midst of darkness. I challenge you, fellow peacemakers, light that hope in your hearts today not only for the Pil Philippines, but for the world. Help us build more bridges in the disaster zone. Be a strong thread in this tapestry of life. We need you. At this point, I would like to pass around these peace and hope buckets. And if you would like to donate and support our relief projects, these donations will proceed to the victims of the typhoon. As we pass around the buckets, please remember, let us change this world one heart at a time. Have a healthy life, everyone. Thank you for paying attention. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, I think he's one of the examples who really took from his heart and passion, not only to, you know, uh, improve his life, but for the life of others, other children. So I think, you know, this is uh, the donations that we can give <coughs> for those children affected by typhoon to give them the Christmas gift, right, from your heart. So please make your donations. Uh,